Hey Jackal, in my previous video I showed you a bunch of tools how you can make macros in Windows, Linux and macOS, but this time I'll show you how to use the auto hotkey and this macro script to change character level styling in DaVinci Resolve. Now let's get digital. Now if you want to use the auto hotkey, you'll want to download version 1.1. In this script that I will link, I've used this one version 2.1 plus, you'll want to download it, or select all copy it, make a new file called it something.ahk, and once you have the auto hotkey installed, you'll be able to run the script by double clicking on it. I have detailed instructions in my previous video, so now let's see how we can actually change the character level styling. Now this is just a fusion composition, so if you need to make one, open the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, put this onto a timeline, then you will select it and go into the fusion page. Now inside here I have three texts, I'll use this one because it doesn't have any changes applied to it yet. So we have a lot of text and we want to change the character level styling. I can already do that, but if you can't, you'll need to right click inside the text field and select character level styling. And the modifier tab shows up that you can click and go to shading tab. Now nothing will show up and if the node is also not selected, nothing will show up when you make the selection, the node actually has to be selected and then you can select the text. Then go to the modifier tab and as you can see select element 1 is enabled and if you disable it, the text will disappear. So have this one enabled and you have up to 8 options. How many you use that is up to you because you can specify what each element does. In this case we'll enable element number 2 and by default it is set to text fill. So this is a text. So if I disable this one, the text is still visible. So in element number 2 this will be so word refill. We want to change this to word, we'll change the color. Now any changes that you make, if you use the auto hotkey script, I suggest you type the values in. So the first one will be 1, and I'll simply press enter when I make the macro, this one will be 0 0.3 and this one will be 0. So this will be my color. Now if you will make any changes to the sections that need to be expanded, expand them before you make the macro. So in here I'll need position, shear and size. If you expand this while making the macro, the next time that you'll run the macro, the macro will close this section and no settings will be applied. I will now scale this down, I think it was something like 0.3. I will adjust the offset Y position by a tiny bit, adjust the X shear amount and I will also adjust a bit of roundness. So these are the kind of values that I want to use. Now ideally what we would do is maybe right click and copy the settings. We do have paste settings but this does nothing. If you copy the text node and paste it, it's basically the same as this one. Also not what you want, you just want to copy this style and paste it a bunch of times in different texts and different projects. And that is why we want to use the auto hotkey script. So I will now run this script. As you can see I now have a bunch of options at the top. Previously I've used the record screen option and the script that I had did not work correctly. So this time I'll use record window. But before I do, I'll make a new selection of a text. And once I make a selection, you'll notice that the select element 2 will be selected and the shading tab will also be available. So this is what you'll have at the beginning when you make a new selection. And now you can record the macro. Now if you have to make a selection, you can also click on an element and make sure that you select number 2, enable it. This will be a appearance board refill. We'll have some roundness to this. I had 0 0.1 I think, so we'll do that. 
we'll go to these values, I'll press enter, 0 0.3, enter 0, enter, and then I can go to, let's see, the offset y, I think this one was minus 0 0.005, I'll use this value, press enter, and then I have shear x value, this one was also negative, I'll use minus 0 0.3, Enter, and the last one I have size, this one will be 0 0.4. And lastly, I didn't change the level, this will be a word. I can now stop recording. The macro is saved, but if I just play it, it will go at twice the speed as I have just made the macro. So if you want to make any changes and speed it up, you can go to edit. You can change the speed here, play speed. So this will go twice as fast by default. If you want to slow it down, just put in a lower value. If you want to speed it up, you can maybe type in 10. And what I also suggest to do, when you find a sleep, lower the value to about 100 to 200, and this will be in milliseconds. So at the beginning, I had about eight second pause. That was big. Two and a half second pause, also too much. So just lower the values to about 100 to 200 milliseconds. Now when you see a mouse click, left, right, and the value, this is the screen coordinate, so this is x and this is y. Don't change these two values, otherwise the mouse will be clicking somewhere else on the screen. Like so. Press Ctrl S to save this. Now I will select a new word, maybe a bigger section, like so, and press F for to play, and also if you made the macro using a mouse, don't move the mouse, otherwise you may bump it a little bit, and the macro will not do what you want, so I'll just not move the mouse and press F4. And bam, done. How fast was that? Now if you need to make any changes, you can then simply do so by maybe adjusting the shear, the size, but if you need to make a lot of changes, I suggest you make a new macro. And then if you need to make an additional element, let's say number three, I suggest you do that also in a single macro. Let's enable it. Maybe this one would be border outline. You can do outside only. And let's say this could be also a word. Now in this case, we have some issues with these lines. We can fix these lines, but we can fix the bottom line. I don't know if this is a bug, I did try to use element number 4 to cover this bottom line, but then when I did that, these lines came back. So let me just show you how to fix these mid lines, and we'll basically go to the modifiers and adjust the priority. So now the space lines went away, but now we have the bottom line, and this bottom line cannot be hidden. And now when you're happy with the macro, so I'm happy with this macro, but it's record.ahk and it's temporary. So make sure that you go to F9 options, go to export the macro, give it a name. I'll use this one, call it one, save it. And if you exit the macro and then open it another time, you can go to options, import it. And now when I go to a text, let's say this one, I can simply press play, but I do need to be in the modifiers. And now because the select element was set to three and I made the macro so that it changes to the second element, it did exactly as I wanted. Now using the macro to change the character level styling in DaVinci Resolve is just one use case. Let me know in the comments down below what else you could use it for. And if you found this video helpful, you know what to do. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackal, keep it digital.